Vaccination is one of medical science's greatest achievements, but despite our familiarity with it, many aspects of vaccination and the immune system remain poorly understood. One of these is the principle of herd immunity. This presentation will introduce some of the basic facts about herd immunity and explain why it is so important. In simple terms, herd immunity describes the situation where people who are immune to a particular disease can act as an effective barrier against the infection of a susceptible, smaller proportion of the population. This minority, which is vulnerable because it has never had the disease or been vaccinated against it, can remain successfully protected from the risk of infection. These susceptible individuals are safely hidden within the herd. To demonstrate how this works, let us look at what happens when an infectious disease enters a susceptible population. The infection passes from person to person until the majority of people within that population become infected. People with the disease may only be infectious for a short period of time. Once they recover, they are immune and will no longer be susceptible to infection or be able to transmit it to anyone else. Now let's see what happens if most of the population have been vaccinated against the disease so that they are immune to infection. In this situation, if a new infectious person enters the population, it is difficult for the infection to take hold as he will only come into direct contact with a few susceptible individuals. Onward transmission of the disease will stop and the chain of infection is broken. As you can see, some susceptible individuals who were not vaccinated will remain uninfected. They have been protected by herd immunity. Anyone who could not be vaccinated for medical reasons will also be protected. However, if the population is only partly vaccinated against the disease, there may still be sufficient numbers of susceptible individuals to enable the infection to spread from person to person. The level of herd immunity is too low to protect them and most of them will become infected. So why is herd immunity so important? High levels of immunity in a population will not only reduce the chances of outbreaks of infectious disease, but will provide crucial protection to several important groups of susceptible people. Firstly, there are those who cannot be vaccinated for medical reasons. This includes those who are allergic to a component in the vaccines, those with immune disorders, and those of chemotherapy or drugs that affect the immune system. Also, pregnant women cannot be given some vaccines. Secondly, there are those who are too young to be vaccinated. These infants often have to rely on herd immunity for protection during the vulnerable period until they are old enough to be vaccinated. Thirdly, there are those who have failed to fully develop protective immunity despite being vaccinated. All vaccines have a small failure rate. This means they will not always fully protect those who have received them and there will still be a small risk of catching the disease. Fourthly, there are those who have not completed a full course of vaccination and who have only partial protection. They will also be at risk. And finally, there are those who have not been vaccinated because they or their parents have refused vaccination because of religious reasons or fears about vaccine reactions. If levels of herd immunity in a population fail to reach a protective level, 
then all of these groups will be vulnerable. There are many well-documented examples where a drop in vaccination levels has led to outbreaks of infection, which has affected those who were susceptible. In Britain, this happened in the 1970s, following a scare about the whooping cough vaccine. There was a precipitous fall in vaccination rates from over 80% to around 30%, as anxious parents refused to have their children vaccinated. The result was a re-emergence of whooping cough outbreaks. Tens of thousands of children became ill and dozens died, many of them infants who were too young to be vaccinated and who had been relying entirely on herd immunity for their protection. More recently, we have witnessed the impact of health scares about MMR, the vaccine which protects against measles, mumps and rubella. Within the last 10 years, MMR vaccination rates dropped from over 90% to below 80%. Even this fairly modest fall was sufficient to erode the protection given by herd immunity. This triggered outbreaks of measles. As a result, measles has become endemic in Britain once again, meaning that there are sufficient numbers of children with measles to sustain ongoing spread of infection in the population. Acute measles infection has claimed the lives of three children in Ireland, and in England, two children have died in the last few years. Both of these had relied on herd immunity for protection because they had been unable to receive vaccination. So, how many people need to be immune before herd immunity works? In order for an outbreak to develop, a person with the disease will have to infect on average at least one other person. The average number of people that will be infected by a single case of disease is sometimes referred to as the reproductive number for that infection. Some diseases like measles are highly contagious and each case will infect an average of 15 other people so its reproductive number is 15. Other diseases are slightly less infectious. Someone with mumps, for example, may only transmit it to about five others. The threshold level of herd immunity that is necessary to protect a population is directly related to the infectiousness of the disease or its reproductive number. The higher the reproductive number, the larger the proportion of the population will need to be immune to provide adequate protection through herd immunity. For measles, if more than one of 15 of the population is not immune, there is a risk that infection can spread. Another way to say this is that for every 15 people in a population, 14 of them need to be immune before an adequate level of herd immunity is reached. This would be about 93% of the population, which is why public health officials set vaccination targets for measles around this figure. Other diseases like mumps are less infectious. A person with mumps, for example, is likely to infect about five other people. So, in terms of the required threshold for herd immunity, at least four in every five of the population, or 80%, will need to be immune to prevent ongoing outbreaks of the disease. Vaccination provides a way of protecting individuals against disease but it also helps sustain herd immunity at a level that will protect the vulnerable minority who are not immune. It is very concerning that for some diseases, vaccination rates in the population are still below the levels required for protective herd immunity. Currently, measles vaccination uptake is around 85% which is still below the level required for adequate herd immunity. Poor vaccination rates are largely due to parents deciding not to vaccinate their children, their main concern being the risk of adverse reactions. 
which fortunately are extremely rare. Regrettably, there are a number of organisations and groups that actively campaign against vaccination and parents are often subjected to a great deal of misinformation about its benefits and possible harms. Unjustified fears about potential vaccine reactions have unduly influenced parents when it comes to decisions about vaccination, making them very reluctant to vaccinate their children. This is one of the primary reasons vaccination levels are unacceptably low in most parts of Britain. For the sake of everyone in our communities, we must do all we can to ensure vaccination levels are maintained and adequate levels of herd immunity are reached to avert outbreaks of infection.